Hey everybody, it's Jason with Parallel Reality coming back with you here today with an article from November 27th from the Gatestone Institute. I don't remember how I found this. I found it on vacation and just kind of followed it away since I didn't have uh, any of my equipment with me to record. And here we are going over this uh, nearly two weeks later. I'm not cutting that out. But the article is called Why the Arabs Betrayed, in quotes, the Palestinians. So I think this gives some... Uh, history about what exactly has been going on in the area, just to give people some context about things. So I thought it would be an interesting article to go through. So let us just jump right into things. It says, the stance of the Arabs and Muslims is yet another indication of their disillusionment with the Palestinians in general and Iran's proxies, that's Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis in particular. Countries such as Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Egypt, and Jordan are also are as opposed to Hamas as they are to Israel. Hamas is another branch of the Muslim Brotherhood organization, which has long posed a threat to their national security. In 2017, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain cut ties with Qatar after accusing it of providing support for Islamist terrorists, including Hamas and the Taliban, as well as Iran. And now that their eyes have been opened once uh, once again, or have been once again forced open, the Palestinians should distance themselves from Hamas and other terrorist groups and join forces with those Arabs and Muslims who recognize that to create a better future for their people, it would benefit them immeasurably to recognize the legitimacy of the state of Israel. So let us go down here. So uh, besides the actual bullet points, we're into them. Well, it says the Iran backed Hamas terrorist group and its supporters are once again disappointed that the Arab countries did not come to the rescue of the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip during the current war, which erupted after the October 7th Hamas massacre of Israelis. At least 1,200 Israelis were murdered and more than 4,500 wounded in the massacre. Another 240 Israelis, including toddlers, children, women, and the elderly, were kidnapped to the Hamas ruled Gaza Strip. This is not the first time that the Palestinians have voiced disappointment with their Arab brothers. In all previous rounds of fighting between Israel and Hamas, the Palestinians have claimed that the Arab and Islamic states were not doing enough to help them. In fact, Palestinians have over the past few decades accused the Arabs of betraying them by signing normalization agreements with Israel and refusing to provide them with financial aid. The Palestinians receive lip service from the Arabs and Muslims, but that is all. It says, true, some Arab countries did dispatch humanitarian and medical aid to the Gaza Strip during the current Israel-Hamas war. The Arab and Islamic countries also held a summit in Saudi Arabia during which they expressed solidarity with the Palestinians and strongly condemned Israel. Yet, for Hamas and many Palestinians, the support was insufficient and showed that their Arab and Muslim brothers had once again turned their backs on them. And that's because they're probably expecting them just to join in in the war to dis destroy Israel, and because they're not doing that, that's why they're pissed. As well, anti-Israel protesters have taken to the streets of, of America, American, Canadian, and European cities to voice support for Hamas and the Palestinians of the Gaza Strip. Most of the Arab and Islamic heads of state governments of state and governments have limited their reactions to statements of condemnation against Israel's war, which has two objectives: to eliminate Hamas and to free the Israeli hostages held in the Gaza Strip. The stance of the Arabs and Muslims is yet another indication of their disillusionment with the Palestinians in general and Iran's proxies, Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis in particular. Countries such as Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Egypt, and Jordan are as opposed to Hamas as they are to Israel. Hamas is another branch of the Muslim Brotherhood organization, which has long posed a threat to our national security. And it looks like we're repeating some of those bullet points from above, but let's just keep going. In 2017, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain cut ties with Qatar after accusing it of providing support for Islamist terrorists, including Hamas and the Taliban, as well as Iran. Saudi Arabia said the decision to cut diplomatic ties were due to or was due to Qatar's embrace of various terrorist and sectarian groups aimed at destabilizing the region, including the Muslim Brotherhood, Al Qaeda, the Islamic State, and militants supported by Iran in the Saudi Arabia in the Saudi Arabia's eastern province. Egypt's foreign ministry said all attempts to stop it, that's Qatar, from supporting terrorist groups failed. So why why are we supporting these guys? Like, I know we give them money. Like, why are we doing that if we know this? That's, that's kind of stupid, it seems. In 2021, a Saudi court sentenced 69 Hamas members to prison terms ranging from 3 to 21 years. The Hamas members were accused of affiliation with a terrorist organization. And in 2014, an Egyptian court banned all activities of Hamas in Egypt, and Reuters reported at the time that Egyptian authorities see Hamas as a major security threat, accusing it of supporting Al-Qaeda-inspired fighters in the Sinai Peninsula, and the court also ordered the closure of all Hamas offices in Egypt. So these guys are obviously a danger to, like, everybody, but yet we have people running around on the streets of this country and other countries going, yeah, we know, we, su we support those folks, yeah, you know, make it make sense, I mean, Jesus' age.
All right, so it says, in 2012, Hamas leaders were forced to leave Syria after they were accused of failing to support the Syrian regime against its opponents during the civil war. Syrian state TV launched a scathing attack on Hamas leader Khaled Mashal, who had moved to Syria after being expelled from Jordan, because the Palestinians get expelled from basically everywhere they go. I know that says Hamas, but it happens to the Palestinians too. Just look at their history. So remember, when you were a refugee aboard planes, Damascus gave you mercy, the station said. No one wanted to shake your hand as if you had rabies. In 1999, the Jordanian authorities expelled Michelle and other Hamas leaders and shut their offices in the kingdom. The move came after the authorities accused the Hamas leadership of meddling in Jordan's sensitive relations with its Palestinian population. I think most of Jordan's population is Palestinian. I think I saw last I saw was like 80% of it. Uh, so yeah, careful there. Says so Dr. Fayez Abu Shamala, a Hamas-affiliated Palestinian academic from the Gaza Strip, wrote on November 22nd, we used to sing, the Arab countries are my homelands. After they failed the Gaza Strip, we began to sing, the Arab countries have failed us. Hamas and other Palestinian terror groups have criticized the Arabs and Muslims for refusing to be more hostile towards Israel since the beginning of the war in the Gaza Strip. The Arab and Islamic position is weak, and the diplomatic efforts of the Arabs and Muslims are hesitant in the face of America on the West, PIJ said in an October 23rd statement. I think that's Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which is another terrorist organization out there. It says, in interviews with the Arab media outlet, uh, Arabi 21, the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip further complained about the failure of the Arabs and Muslims to come to their rescue. Um, Muhammad, a 64-year-old woman from the city of Khan Yunus in southern Gaza, condemned the position of Arab rulers, presidents, and kings who failed to protect the, pa the Palestinian people. She added, they, that's Arab and Muslim, Muslim leaders, watch our children die and do nothing. This Nael, a Palestinian father in, uh, from Gaza City, also denounced the weakness and betrayal by the Arab rulers with regard to supporting the Palestinian cause and defending the people of Gaza. We did not expect the Arab rulers to let us down. We cannot rely on the Arab rulers, but our hope is in God first, and then in the free Arab peoples, that they will move and stand with us. The Shura Council of the Muslim Brotherhood in Jordan expressed deep dissatisfaction with the official Arab position and its extreme weakness in taking serious steps to curb the mad, rampaging Israeli machine of death and his important people in the Gaza Strip. And nothing like that mad, rampaging uh, machine of death that you guys set into motion by doing what you did first. But yeah, okay, whatever. I'll go ahead and play victim here. Does Yemeni political analyst Muti al Mekhlafi remarked, It is a shame that the U.S. moves aircraft carriers to the Middle East to support Israel, and that Western countries and allies of the Zionist entity support the continuing attacks and crimes of the Zionist occupation forces against the Palestinian people. So this guy's already got a lot of stuff wrong, but okay. Uh, at a time when the Islamic governments have abandoned their religious, national, and moral duty to support and aid the oppressed Palestinian people, uh, they're being oppressed by themselves, doofus. This history will immortalize all the hypocritical and cowardly Arab and Islamic leader positions in ink of disgrace, humiliation, and subservience. Because once again, Hamas and its supporters have seen that their Arab and Muslim brothers are disgusted with them. Once again, Palestinians have seen that Iran and its proxies are the enemies of not only Israel, but a growing number of Arabs and Muslims. Undoubtedly, Hamas and other Palestinians were hoping that Arab and Islamic armies would march on Israel and destroy it in the, after the October 7th carnage. Well, I hate to break it to you, that's just not a thing that's going to happen. It says, now that their eyes have been once again forced open, the Palestinians should distance themselves from Hamas and other terrorist groups and join forces with those Arabs and Muslims who recognize that to create a better future for the people, it would benefit them to immeasurably, it benefit them immeasurably to recognize the legitimacy of the state of Israel. Well, there you go. This is written by someone who, uh, well, that's definitely an uh, emerald name. So uh, I'd say coming from someone that might be uh, you know, closely aligned to the situation. So what do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.